Once upon a time, there was a generation that added almost 30 new evolution lines for old Pokémon. And at the time, I was kind of indifferent to this. The next generation added exactly zero new Pokémon to old lines, despite a few initially confusing similarities. It was here that I really began to appreciate what the fourth generation was going for, and I started to miss this idea of new forms on classic creatures. Once the sixth generation Mega Evolution craze began giving us just that, and even including the potential for the fabled fourth stage of evolution, I was pumped. The first two Gen 6 games have given us a massive total of 48 new Pokémon forms through Mega Evolution. And ever since these Pokémon have been announced, you guys have been asking me time and time again to talk about the Pokémon forms that I would like to see become a new Mega. This topic has been really heavily covered, so I didn't want to jump into a video like this unless I could really do it right. But right now, I think the stars have finally aligned. For one, the upcoming Sun and Moon games finally have some legit trailers, and my hype levels for possible new forms are through the roof. And two, I finally have some help to make the Mega Evolution video that I always wanted to. While I'm a huge fan of Pokémon and its lore, the only competitive thing that I've dabbled in with Pokémon are the cards, and not so much the games. So today we have Eren Cybertron Zang, multiple-time Pokémon VGC National Champion and World Competitor, who will be helping me shape some Pokémon I'd love to see become Megas with competitive ideas for abilities, typing, and stats for some realistic and fun Mega Evolution possibilities. And wouldn't it be great to actually see what some of these Mega Evolutions might look like? For that, we have the talented Theologically, who helped design and illustrate each Mega that we're talking about today. This is another one of those top 10 videos that isn't really a top 10. I don't really have a particular favorite, so instead I'll be doing these Pokémon in order the generation that they first appeared in. Let's do this, starting with Raichu. Pikachu is everywhere. Like, literally, an army of Pikachu are breeding and taking over the world. All this Pikachu madness has me so confused. Why doesn't anybody want to use a Thunderstone around here? But Josh, just look at Ash's Pikachu. The power of friendship allowed him to stay strong without evolving. Oh, forget that. I don't just want my Pikachu to evolve. I want him to evolve twice, giving us a Mega Raichu. This is probably our least radical change in model when moving to Mega form, but I wanted Raichu to have longer legs fit for jumping and a form that appeared a little more physically intimidating. When I think of Raichu, I think of Lieutenant Surge's terrifying partner in the anime, and I wanted to build on that. Alright, Aaron, I know competitive battlers occasionally use Raichu, but what are some ways that we could help restore Raichu's glory over its mascot pre-evolution? Well, Josh, Raichu is actually a super interesting Pokémon even without a Mega Evolution. While its base stats only total 485, it has a high speed of 110 and gets access to an incredible ability in Lightning Rod and great support moves such as Fake Out, Faint, and Encore. We've seen a fair amount of Raichu in this year's VGC metagame as well as past formats such as 2014. With that being said, I think it would be neat to see Mega Raichu stay as pure electric. I'd like to say major stat increases to attack, special attack, and speed with minor increases to defense and special defense, effectively buffing it overall. This allows players to either opt for the special route or the physical route. As for abilities, I think an ability similar to Mega Salamence's Aerial 8 and Mega Gardevoir's Pixelate would be really neat as well. Raichu gets access to a lot of nice normal type attacks that would appreciate the boost, such as Fake Out, Quick Attack, Return, Double Slap, Giga Impact, Hyper Beam, etc. Ultimately, Raichu would serve as a Pokemon that hits hard, gets access to support moves, and can stay in non-Mega form to draw away electric type attacks. Once Mega Evolving, its power increases significantly, but players have to be careful due to how frail it is and protect it accordingly. Next up is Arcanine, a Pokemon I've wanted to see more in the limelight ever since the second episode of the anime, where Arcanine is depicted as if it's a legendary Pokemon alongside the three legendary birds. Heck, its category even lists it as legendary Pokemon, even though it isn't a legendary Pokemon. For its design, we went with one based on the Shiso statues found in the Ryukyu Islands, a take on the Guardian Lion statue motif that can be found all throughout Asia. The ball that these statues protect, thought to symbolize protection of a land or even control of the world itself, would make for a perfect glowing fire orb, also serving as a callback to the Firestone that Arcanine came from. Regular Arcanine is similar to Raichu in the sense that we've seen it do well occasionally in VGC. It actually won the Massachusetts Regional Championships last year on a Parish Trap team. One of Arcanine's niches in competitive play lies in its ability to either build offensively or defensively. It gets access to a bunch of support moves such as Morning Sun and Will-O-Wisp as well as offensive attacks such as Flare Blitz and Close Combat. It has really solid overall base stats as well, and I think it makes sense to stick with just Fire as it's typing as a Mega Evolution. I'd like to see Mega Arcanine get about even increases in attack, defense, special defense, and speed. One ability that I'd actually love to see on it is Fur Coat, which halves the damage from physical moves and is currently unique only to Fur Fruit. 
That makes Arcanine a complete tank against physical type Pokemon, and when you consider the dominance of physical type Pokemon each year in VGC, such as Kangaskhan and Landorus, Arcanine feels like a great alternative to the current hit hard megas we've seen, and it would fit perfectly with the Guardian Lion statue motif. Moving on to the one Generation 2 Pokemon I picked for today's video is Shuckle. There are a lot of unevolved Generation 2 Pokemon out there, and I know a lot of you would like to see Dunsparce or Delibird Megas, but Shuckle has always interested me the most. It has by far the best total defenses of any Pokemon in the game, but the rest of its stats are just so weak. Shuckle's major theme is that it creates berry juice inside of its shell, so what if it was able to ferment those juices into a protective and possibly even toxic layer? Shuckle's always felt like a troll Pokemon in VGC, to be quite honest. I remember a 2014 World Champion Sajun Park would always make troll teams around it and play online on Pokemon Showdown. It struggles to have actual success because it can't put on enough offensive presence, especially when you take the timer into consideration. With that being said, I think it would be hilarious to see Mega Shuckle get even more defense and special defense with minor increases in attack and special attack. <coughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Did you just say more defense? Aaron, please! Think of the children! What was that? More defense? For more added hilarity, giving it solid rock would make it even more difficult to knock out. In all seriousness though, I think like giving Shuckle the Aegislash treatment would actually be super interesting. Shuckle is currently only ever seen with gimmick strategies. Giving it the ability to switch between its immense defenses and adding on an offensive form would make it a major threat like a dish out a lot of damage while being incredibly difficult to knock out if managed properly. Next is possibly the most requested Mega Evolution of all time, Flygon. Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire gave a lot of third generation dragons a chance to shine as a Mega, but poor Flygon was stuck behind the pack. In theory, according to a Nintendo Dream interview translated on Poke Beach, Omega Flygon has been considered for a while, but Ken Sugimori and his team couldn't come up with a design that they liked. Well, we tried our best to come up with a design that we liked, and here it is. This Mega Flygon takes a lot of inspiration from the Dragonfly, giving it a second pair of wings and arms to match. And we figured, with all this bug talk, why not experiment by making Mega Flygon the very first dragon and bug type Pokémon? Flygon has always felt inferior to its dragon counterparts in BGC, and is rarely ever seen. It does get access to some neat moves such as Faint and Tailwind, but historically it has not been used really because of Pokémon like Garchomp, which have more of an offensive presence. Being one of the highest demanded Mega Evolutions and one that I'd like to really personally see, I'd love to see it become an offensive beast with the Mega Evolution. I think it makes sense to give it major increases in attack and special attack while also boosting its speed so it gets out of the awkward speed tier that it's currently in. Following along with the Bug Dragon idea, I think adaptability would actually be a really neat ability, especially with access to moves such as U-Turn, Bug Bite, and Draco Meteor. Drago Meteor has always been one of the strongest moves in VGC. We often saw it with a Dragon Gem on Latios, but its power was nerfed from Generation 5 to 6 and Dragon Gem was removed. I think it'd be really awesome to see Mega Flygon have the ability to one-hit KO Pokemon with Draco Meteor in VGC, while sh also showing some love to the less seen bug type. On the flip side of Flygon, a strong Pokemon who could be made even stronger is Tropius, a Pokemon that I feel isn't being utilized at all. I have a cousin who used to do nothing but collect Tropius TCG cards, and I used to joke about how ridiculous it looked. It is a flying banana Brontosaurus. That has to be one of the most ridiculous Pokémon in terms of pure concept that I've ever heard. So naturally, we had to turn this into something special. Honestly, I think this new Mega looks incredibly gracious, combining aspects from the Brontosaurus, the Banana Blossom, and of course, more bananas. Oh, banana. Regular Tropius isn't exactly the most competitive Pokemon. None of its base stats are over 100, and while it has niche roles, it feels constantly outclassed. We've actually really never seen Tropius do well in VGC. It feels like more people use him as an HM slave than an actual Pokemon. I think that Megatropius would be cool either as its current grass flying typing or as a grass dragon similar to Mega Sceptile. As for stat increases, I'd like to see evenly distributed stats, since its overall base stats are currently quite lacking. It could have either a defensive ability, such as Thick Fat or Filter, to further increase its bulk and survivability, allowing it to take advantage of moves such as Leech Seed and Toxic, or a more offensive ability, such as keeping Chlorophyll or giving it the Mega Houndoom treatment with Solar Power. And heck, if these games are going to be Pokémon Sun and Pokémon Moon, there's no way we can do this without Mega Evolutions for Soul Rock and Lunatone. These Pokémon have been too weak without any kind of evolution since their creation in Ruby and Sapphire, and while Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire didn't give them any help either, if Sun and Moon doesn't do something to help this duo, then we are truly doomed. 
My idea for each of these Pokémon were that the power of Mega Evolution could allow them to reawaken through their stone forms to become literal suns and moons. Both would keep their psychic typing, but the awakened Solrock Sun would gain the fire type, while Lunatone's Moon would gain fairy. Theologically, even added a ridiculous amount of little detail that I missed at first, such as Solrock still having orbiting rocks around it and having its peaks constructed out of solar flares. And this spot here by Lunatone's Eye is an homage to the East Asian folktale of the Rabbit in the Moon. The only thing left to do is to make these Pokémon as cool in battle as they look visually. For stat increases, I feel like there's two ways you could buff Soul Rock. Either give it major stat increases in attack and or special attack, or make it more defensive with buffs to both defense and special defense. Mega Soul Rock could keep its levitate ability so that it still stays immune to one of its bigger weaknesses, ground. An ability like Draw would also make a lot of sense and introduces another weather-inducing user, which are always common Pokemon in BGC. While Charizard Y has been a popular mega option due to its ability to hit incredibly hard and set up the sun, I think Solrock could offer a more defensive role with its new ability. As for Lunatone, I have to admit, I couldn't think of any cool BGC ideas. You dumb moon! I know I've already done one electric mega Pokemon today, but another one I've always wanted to see is Luxray from the fourth generation. It's a physical attacker in a pretty special dominated type, and I've always loved how it looks. Unfortunately, its other stats, especially the low speed, have kept it from seeing a lot of life in competitive play. I knew I wanted to make Mega Luxray's design including the Dark type to make the first electric and dark Pokémon, and theologically took the concept of darkness and the electricity to create a really sick X-ray effect for this Mega form. Luxray was actually one of my favorite Pokémon when I played through Diamond and Pearl, because I love all the cool moves it got access to. I also like the Dark type being, giving it stab increases to moves such as Crunch for a potential Mega Evolution. I think Mega Luxury should see major stat increases in attack and speed, while also adding on some defense and special defense. For its ability, I feel like its biggest issue is the lack of damage from its best moves. When we do see Luxury competitive play, we often see it carry a Choice Band or a Life Orb to boost its damage output. Since it can't hold an item when it Mega Evolves, I think it makes a lot of sense to either give Luxray the Strong Jaw ability, boosting the power of its Strong Biting moves, or the Sheer Force ability. With the fantastic regular ability in Intimidate, I could see Mega Luxray becoming an offensive powerhouse similar to Mawile. And to close out our generations for Megas is the 5th generation. To this day, there is just one 5th generation Mega Evolution, Audino, so I figured bringing a few more to the table would be fun. My first pick was Golurk an interesting evolution line that hasn't quite hit competitive potential with its stance, but hopefully with Mega Evolution, we can save it. We base its illustration off of its Pokedex entries, which mention that removing its seal would unleash incredible energy. In Jewish folklore, there are various tales of golems going out of control or falling into pieces as their seals are removed. Golurk actually saw some success all the way back in VGC 2011, having finished in the top 16 at US Nationals, back when the rule set was Unova only, but it's really died down since then. It has a really intriguing Ghost and Ground typing, which I personally like for its Mega, although I think Ghost and Fighting would be interesting as well. Its main weaknesses come from the fact that it's too slow to operate outside of Trick Room teams and takes too much damage while not retaliating enough back. To improve Golurk through Mega Evolution, I think it should just see major increases in attack, defense, and special defense. This would allow it to survive longer while also dishing out more damage. Adding on huge power would be really neat. It turns Golurk into an offensive juggernaut that can sweep through teams with the proper support such as Trick Room teams. And for number 10, by far the strongest Pokémon to receive a potential Mega here is Hydreigon. This massive Dark and Dragon Beast has in many ways been a huge poster Pokémon for the strength of the 5th generation, but heck, if Rayquaza, Kyogre, and Groudon can have Megas now, this one shouldn't end up too overpowered. For design, there were a lot of different routes that we could take, but we decided on completing the Japanese mythical beast, the Yamato no Orochi. This legendary serpent had eight heads, so we tried to incorporate all eight, with each head referencing various parts of the Hydreigon line. Having won multiple national and world championships, Hydreigon has been one of the best Pokemon in VGC historically, and was often used because of its strong typing, base stats, and fantastic moveset. I think it makes sense to stick with Dark Dragon for its Mega Evolution, although I wouldn't even mind seeing a Steel Dragon given that its original design was supposed to be based off a mechanical dragon before they changed it. As for stat increases, I think it makes sense to see major boosts to both attack and special attack, with minor adjustments to defense, special defense, and speed. It should still keep the levitate ability to give it immunity to ground type attacks. Since Hydreigon is so strong even without a Mega Evolution, I don't really want to make it overly broken with this one. That's all for today, but I want to thank you guys for checking out today's ideas. If you have any Megas that you'd like to see, be sure to follow, like, and It looks like you've all been fooled, because this video isn't really 10 Mega Evolutions I want to see. It's 11! Introducing 
the only six generation Pokemon that I want to get a mega evolution for any reason. Okay, but seriously, I really like Halucha, and I will do anything it takes to elevate this guy to the status that he deserves. Visually, we went for a look that increased its Aztec Eagle Warrior design by giving it a headdress similar to the one said to have been worn by Montezuma. We also made it even more buff to fit in with the wrestling motif to really hammer home those flying presses. Halucha hasn't had great success in BGC, but it's certainly a neat Pokemon that has some strong roles in single battles. Its main niche currently lies in its high base speed stat, the unburdened ability, and its fighting flying typing. I think Mega Halucha should definitely stay with its current unique typing and build off its strengths. For stat increases, I think it definitely should see major buffs to attack and speed with minor increases in the defenses. As for abilities, I think Gale Wings would actually be really neat, similar to Talonflame. That in combination with Sky Drop would allow for some pretty cool setup strategies in VGC. Okay, for real this time, that's all we've got. Huge thank you to both of our guests that helped make today's project happen. You can check out Aaron's channel at Cybertron Productions, where he crafts tons of awesome content all about learning the Pokemon competitive video game scene. And you can also follow Theologically's amazing art at her Tumblr, artsy-theo.tumblr.com. She draws in a ridiculous amount of different styles, but a huge project she's been doing that's been fun to watch is all of the Pokemon drawn in a style that mimics Ken Sugimori's classic watercolor art. As always, you can subscribe to this channel by clicking the button here to follow for more updates. More Sun and Moon news is coming soon, so expect another video right around the corner. I'll catch you guys next time with more Nintendo content.